Now what we intend to talk about another concept that is DNA polymerization properties. Before going into the detailed understanding of the DNA replication process, you need to know the enzyme, the key enzyme for DNA replication in prokaryotes as well as in eukaryotes. The enzyme for DNA replication is DNA polymerase. So this is a polymerase enzyme. What kind of enzyme it is? A polymerase. So polymerase enzyme do polymerization. Okay. Polymerase enzyme do DNA polymerization. Polymerization of DNA means basically we have DNTPs. So DNTPs are tagged together, make a polymer of DNTPs. That is known as a DNA. The polymer of DNTP is DNA. Now for this process of polymerization, the DNA polymerase which is involved, DNA polymerase is a multi-lobuled and multiple structure containing enzyme. We will see that in a moment. But this polymerase has some features. The feature is that, let me write the first feature, the there is a direction of polymerase movement and that is 5' prime to 3' prime direction. That is the direction of movement of polymerase. Polymerase can only extend the strand. And second important property and drawback of DNA polymerase is that no de novo synthesis. What does that mean? It means the DNA polymerase enzyme cannot start the process of DNA polymerization. It's a big disadvantage. It cannot initiate the process of DNA polymerization. Although RNA polymerase is a de novo polymerase, RNA polymerase can start the process of polymerization of RNTPs, not DNTPs. Right? That's why RNA polymerase, I say, is more versatile. RNA polymerase can function all on its own with just the help of a sigma factor to recognize the promoter. Okay? But DNA polymerase requires multiple accessory enzymes in order to continue the DNA replication process. Now, as we know, the DNA polymerase is not a de novo type. It requires a 3 prime hydroxyl, a free 3 prime hydroxyl to extend it. So basically, the DNA polymerase can extend the 3 prime hydroxyl. So let me say that we have this interaction phosphate and DNA interaction like this. This is phosphodiester backbone, and these are the hydrogen bonds present and what we can see let's say this is 5 prime this is 3 prime there is a phosphate free and this is a template let's say okay so dna polymerase can only extend this 3 prime hydroxyl towards so 5 towards 3 prime and this was inverse right i believe you all know the 5 prime 3 prime concept we were not going to discuss that so here the hydroxyl can be extended. How they extend it? Because we have DNTPs coming in and DNTPs how many phosphates they have? Let's say A and adenine they have three phosphate groups are attached. And this hydroxyl do a nucleophilic attack to the alpha phosphate. Because imagine this is adenine, three phosphate groups attached. This is known as alpha, beta, gamma phosphate. Alpha is the one closest to the base, then beta, then gamma. So the hydroxyl attacks this alpha, this bond is broken. Beta gamma phosphate released as PPI, pyrophosphate. And this adenine with a phosphate group is attached to that position. This is the phosphorylation process. I mean, this is a polymerization process. So, DNA polymerase can only polymerize an existing 3' hydroxyl. Okay? Here we will see the polymerization properties of DNA. The polymerization properties is explained here again. You can see this is the template strand. Template strand means the strand used to code the other complementary DNA strand. So, this is the template and the if A is there in template, we will have T. If C is there, we have G. So, A, T, G, C pairing. A, T with 2 hydrogen bonds, G, C with 3 hydrogen bonds. And you can see this is 3 prime hydroxyl. And this is, three, this is the 3 prime hydroxyl. This was the growing 3 phosphate groups. 
so hydroxyl will attack here and this phosphodiester bond will be formed PPI will be released see the bond formed here another free free prime hydroxyl is ready for catalyzing the next step and this PPI is broken down into two inorganic phosphate and this is a high del G negative reaction that drives the whole DNA polymerase forward direction the whole DNA polymerization to forward direction so for this DNA polymerization event a polymerase enzyme requires at least two phosphate group it requires at least two phosphate group here how many phosphate groups they have three if three phosphate group is there the three prime hydroxyl easily continue the process of nucleophilic attack and the process is done but if two phosphate is there still they can manage to do that but if one phosphate is present then polymerase enzyme cannot polymerize and there are situations during our cell cycle cell growth where there is a single phosphate cleaved site present those sites are known as nicks nick in the dna n i c k so when i say the dna nick a phosphodiester bond broken because only one phosphate group is present there if one phosphate group is there polymerase cannot polymerize it so a nick cannot be sealed by dna polymerase and we'll see that in dna replication in lagging strand there are multiple nick generated at the end so those nicks need to be filled by a separate dedicated enzyme known as dna ligase dna ligase seals the nick in the dna try to understand this concept now how exactly it's done we'll see that but before that see how exactly polymer is work you can see in this picture how exactly the polymer is function you can see in this this is the catalytic site of dna polymerase we have a substrate binding site we have a active site so this is the template dna right if c is there g if t is there a if t is there a if c is there g now this substrate binding site will bind to the in this case is binding to g the incoming dntp here the g and how they position it due to the help of metal ions generally magnesium is present there and the magnesium that are present here with the help of the aspartic acid residue which is negatively charged aspartic acid means co minus in the r group and here we have metal ions that stabilize the aspartic acid and also it stabilizes the backbone the phosphate that is present there i mean not exactly the backbone the phosphate the three phosphate that are present here so that they bring this is alpha phosphate the green color and this one beta phosphate this is gamma phosphate and you can see the beta gamma phosphate and alpha phosphate along with aspartic acid hold together by magnesium ion here in the center this is the magnesium ion when they hold together so magnesium ion in the center four hands is connected to beta gamma alpha and this is aspartic acid particularly the co this side of aspartic acid hold together by the magnesium here in the center so it kinds of stick the g very near to the substrate binding site where the template dna and interaction to the substrate that is the g will be matched so whether it's match or mismatch depending upon that the polymerase will move forward if this is a match that is c with g yes of course c g pairing is correct then there is catalysis the process moves to the next step and if there is no match then there is a structural change and this this particular strand let's say a mismatch is added then there is a structural change and it will be transferred to another site known as exonucleus site or proofreading site of the polymerase because the polymerase looks like a, a, a thumb like this and it has the catalytic site and it also has a exonucleus site which is a proofreading site and how exactly dna knows whether uh, it's a proofreading required or not because the moment a miss or erroneous nucleotide is bound let's say c should pair with g but instead of g we put t c t bond is there somehow in that case the velocity velocity we can say that the 
speed of this polymerase processivity, we can say processivity, not velocity. The processivity goes slow. The moment we add a wrong nucleotide, the processivity goes slow. The moment we add another wrong nucleotide, the processivity further slows down. So it can withstand till four or five consecutive mistakes. After that, the DNA stalls. I mean, the polymer stalls in the DNA. And of course, the DNA need to go through the exonucleus domain of polymerase and polymerase cuts the wrong or erroneous nucleotides out and a new proper nucleotide is added to continue the process. So this is a natural proofreading uh, process or natural proofreading idea of DNA polymerase. But what we are discussing here the polymerization event particularly and polymerization I told you that minimum two phosphates are needed. Minimum two phosphates. Three phosphates are good enough but minimum two phosphates are needed. And <clears throat> How exactly the poly polymer is as I told you that two at least two phosphates are needed. If there are no two phosphates then there is only one option that is the use of DNA ligase to seal the knee because ligase can attach the phosphodiester bond as it is like before without the presence of three or two phosphate group. But the question is chemically it's not possible. Because it's a nucleophilic attack, hydroxyl attacks alpha carb, alpha phosphate, beta gamma phosphate release. So, in this case, how is it chemically possible? Ligase require the two extra phosphate from some source. And that source is ATP. Because ATP contains three phosphates. So, what ligase do? Just look at this picture very carefully. Here you can see that this is DNA ligase, this is starting phase of DNA ligase. This is the lysine residue of the active site and NH, the amino group of the lysine residue is coming out here, the active site of the uh, ligase. Now what happened is that ATP deno uh, donates its AMP form. Okay, AMP form is donated, adenosine monophosphate and PI is removed from there. Okay, so here inorganic phosphate, two phosphates are released. And what we have, one phosphate is tagged with AMP, adenosine monophosphate, which is linked to the N-terminal site of the lysine residue. And now, you can see that the this is the this was the NIC. NIC means 3' prime hydroxyl, which is free. And a 5' prime single phosphate. Right? If there was a 3 phosphate, then this hydroxyl can attack the alpha phosphate, beta gamma phosphate can be released. By normal process of polymerization. But here... At this point, this phosphate, this electron, this uh, the O minus that is here, it attacks this bond between NH and AMP. So this electron is donated there. As a result of which, what happens? Lysine is now connected. Lysine, so from AMP gets connected here, and lysine is free. Lysine gets free. So basically what is the job, ligase gets, gets free from lysine. So what is the job of ligase? Ligase with the help of lysine associate with AMP and the moment this electron is donated, AMP is attached to this phosphate and ligase becomes free. So ligase's job is simply to take AMP from ATP and transfer it to the 5' phosphate of the NIC. So once that is done, now how many phosphate we got? One phosphate pre-existing green color. Another AMP, phosphate from AMP. Now this hydroxyl, this, see, rearrangement, AMP gets cleaved out and a phosphodiester bond is formed. Clear? So normal process of phosphodiester bond formation, but it requires minimum two phosphate, I told you. Chemically also it requires two phosphate. In this case, if there is a NIC originated, when there is no uh, availability of 2-phosphate, then what happens is simply the ligase enzyme utilizes ATP, donates AMP from ATP, where donating AMP means 1-phosphate is transferred. Existing 1-phosphate was there, so 2-phosphates with AMP. And then the rest of the attack continues and the AMP is cleaved out, phosphodiester bond, phone.